the Nur of the Arsh, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala, malaikatan sayyaratan fudulan, tatatabaroon majalis al-dhikr, fa'idha wajadu majlisan fihi dhikr, ta'adu ma'ahum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said, that Allah azza wa jal, he has angels that roam around, roam around looking for majalis al-dhikr, places where the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. فَإِذَا وَجَدُوا مَجْلِسًا فِيهِ ذِكِرْ And when they find a majlis, when they find a majlis where the name of Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioned, كَعَدُوا مَعَهُمْ They sit with them in that majlis. So we hope, يعني, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit more from this halaqa and that we want to be with the angels just a few more minutes longer, insha'Allah, bi'ibhidillah. So I will unjustly ask the speaker maybe يعني, to contract his speech just as much as he can. And insha'Allah we'll open it up for Q&A. I'll pass it on to Brother Reza. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Lahu al-mulk, lahu al-hum, lahu al-hum. Wa ilayhi turja'u kullu shay. Walhamdulillah, al-lazhi hanzal al-Qur'an, fadhan lil-nas. وأرسل رسوله به بشيرا ونذيرا وليحكم به بين الناس اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and all the man with Islam We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has possession of all things and the rule returns back to him and belongs to him and all issues return back to him and he is the one who revealed the Qur'an as a guidance for mankind and he sent his messenger Muhammad وسلم, with that book, with the Qur'an uh, as a warner and a give of glad tidings and in order to rule between the people with it and we ask for the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be upon Muhammad والسلام, and upon his family and upon the companions with him uh, the main focus of the discussion this month was actually the talk which was given by our brother Abu Zahra, which was on Maslah. So the talk which I'm giving is actually anyway just a brief addition on the end, rather than something of a similar length in any case. And this is actually in accordance with this position anyway inside the ilm. Because what we're talking about is a qaida kulliya it's a general principle or an overall rule and it's not part of the asul it's not a hukum shari'i in itself rather all of these general principles or general rules they are derived from the ahkam shari'iyah aslan or they are derived from the uh, adilla shari'iyah sorry in origin so they are built upon the adilla shari'iyah and they are not themselves adilla and so from amongst the qa'id uh, kulliyah is for example the qa'idah Al-Yakeen La Yuzal Bishak Something which is definite is not removed by something which is doubtful. <coughs> or as we're going to be discussing, Darurat to be al Mahdurat. Those things which are uh, uh, necessities permit that which has been forbidden. And when I say that these are general principles, it means that they apply in all the different they apply in all the different aspects of fiqh whether that's ibadat or mu'amalat they're more restricted so for example if we just give a couple of examples from the first principle which I mentioned al-yaqeen la yuzal bishak that something which is definite is not removed by something which is doubtful so for example someone makes his wudu and he praises salat al-maghrib or let's make it easier, he praises Salatul Dhuhr and then he goes back to work and he spends his time working and it's in summer time so there's a bit of a distance between the Dhuhr and the Asr and so when he comes back to Asr and he's about to pray his Asr he thinks to himself oh, did I lose my wudu or not? and he's now in the middle of the prayer so Shaitan has come to him and told him maybe you lost your wudu, some whispering he got this is Shaq so he has to go back and think, what's the yaqeen? What's, what, what's the thing which I know for sure? For sure I know that I made wudu and I prayed dhuhr. Between dhuhr until now, I don't really know. Shaitan is just coming and whispering to me, but I don't really know. So therefore, 
al yaqeen la yuzal bil shah. That which is definite is not removed by that which is da'khil. Then the brother, the poor brother, he's maftun by the, shay by the shaitan inside this asr prayer. He's praying his raka'at. And he's prayed a number of raka'at. He doesn't remember. Did I pray four or did I pray three? <laughs> shaitan didn't leave him. <laughs> he came to him over his wudu. Now he's coming to him about the, the number of raka'at which he prayed. Did I pray four? Did I pray three? Okay. I know for sure that I prayed three. So he knows for sure that he prayed three. So this is the yaqeen. He doesn't know whether he prayed four. That's the shek. That's the doubt. So he counts as though he's prayed three. And then he prays the last one. And then he does uh, uh, the sujood for forgetfulness at the end of the prayer. So that's the application of the principle al yaqeen la yuzal bi shek. That something definite doesn't is no room by something doubtful. So let's take an example from Muamalat, for example, to show that it, it applies everywhere. Someone buys uh, something from a seller and he goes back for a refund and he says, I bought this from you for 25 pounds, I need to have 25 pounds refund. And the seller says to him, No, 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 I gave you a discount. I sold it to you for 23 pounds and so I'll give you 23 pounds back. How are you going to resolve this now? No receipt, nothing. How are you going to resolve it? You look and see what the seller normally sells that good for. He normally sells that good for 25 pounds. This is what he sells it to all of his customers for. So that's the yaqeen. That's what's known that he always sells that good for 25 pounds. So when he's now saying 23 pounds and the other person is saying 25 pounds, the shek is 23 pounds and so it goes with the one who said 25 pounds. So this is an example of a principle which is applied throughout. So we know that these rules, they have been derived from an understanding of Sharia text. And they have to be applied according to the conditions. So the one we want to discuss today is a khaf al-tarari. The lighter or the, the easier of the two harmful things. Or it's also known as ahwan al sharrain The least of the two evils. Or the lesser of two evils. And this particular rule is a branch of uh, another rule. And the main rule is الضروري يزال That which is harmful is removed. And this is based upon a Sharia text. We said it has to be based upon a Sharia text. So it's based upon a numerous texts. But the main one, or one of the main evidences which is brought is the hadith of Rasulullah لا ضرر ولا درار there is no harm and no reciprocating of harm. So anything which causes harm, if there's nothing inside the Sharia which explicitly tells you to do it, or explicitly forbids you from it, or mentions it, then this text can be applied to it. So for example, uh, someone who's growing a tree in his house and the branches of the tree go and begin to cover someone else's house and begins to cause a problem for that person then he has to either cut the tree or cut the branches because he's calling causing harm now so this is how the principle is applied or if you want to apply it upon a greater level on a state level you can say for example kind of certain kinds of weapons should not be owned by private individuals because if private individuals own those weapons, then the society is going to be in problems. So for example, even in America, which they allow the private individuals to own machine guns, you can own machine guns, but they won't allow you to own chemical weapons. Yeah, because the chemical weapons is going to be harmful. Yeah, so in the same way, in the Dawlat al-Islamiyah, insha'Allah, we would prohibit, for example, the private ownership of chemical weapons or the private ownership for example of nuclear weapons or something along these kind of lines uh, because of course it's going to cause a great harm that you can have private individuals owning such kind of destructive uh, 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 weapons so if we're going to talk about this rule uh, to be so the darura is something which is a difficulty which cannot be repelled or a necessity for living or that which is necessary to protect oneself from destruction. 